Mike Tillow and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego, well, cloudy San Diego actually, once for once. And today I'm delighted to be joined from all the way across the pond, as they like to say here, from Farndon in London by Campbell Payton. How are you doing, Campbell? Very good, thank you. It's a, a standard British day. I don't know if you can see from my shoulders, but I just got absolutely soaked walking the dog. So yeah, but like some yeah. of your San Diego weather over here. Yeah, well, as you know, being originally from Ireland, I've paid my dues when it comes to rain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and Campbell is an experienced entrepreneur marketing expert who established himself as a leader in the world of mobile techno technology and app commerce. As the co-founder and CEO of Store Lab, Campbell is passionate about empowering brands to unlock the full potential of mobile marketing with a focus on push notifications and customizable mobile applications. And what we're going to talk today is about maximizing mobile commerce. Uh, so basically the future of e-commerce. And I guess uh, it's funny, isn't it, uh, Campbell, we're, we're talking about the, the future of e-commerce, and it's only five minutes ago we were talking about e-commerce itself, right, uh, yeah. originally. And then, and so the emphasis on the emphasis on mobile commerce, right, what is happening in the market, what's happening in, in behavior and that that's, that's driving us towards that? Sure. So, I mean, uh, just to, to clarify very slightly, um, uh, we, we, I run a company, an app development agency that makes mobile apps, and I am firmly under the belief that app commerce will eventually surpass e-commerce as mm -hmm. the primary driver of online sales. Um, so what are we seeing at the moment? So um, you'll have noticed, I'm sure, that lots of the major fashion brands in the world are doing a huge amount to try and drive people towards apps. If you look at the like Nike or Adidas or you know, Shein, uh, Farfetch, Boohoo, all of these companies are, if you go look at their, their sort of uh, home pages, there's big banners saying, uh, please download our mobile app for a usually pretty hefty incentive. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some of these companies don't offer a, that large incentives very often. And you're having, you know, the 15 to 20, 25% uh, sales to get people just to download the mobile app on their first purchase. So, you know, why are they doing those things? And what is it about app commerce that makes things amazing? So, um, yeah, and, and uh, to an extent, uh, the platforms themselves, Google and Apple, are, are creating things like app clips and instant apps, which are trying to drive people to use apps more often. These are think of it as app streaming rather than app downloading. Um, so the whole industry in e-commerce is, or uh, yeah, is trying to drive people towards apps. For various reasons um and one of those is or the, the three main ones that we like to talk about number one push notifications highest converting marketing communication on the planet convert 15 times higher than email nine times higher than sms they convert higher than google and, and facebook advertising or meta advertising as i should say um and the difference between all of those things is they're free they're free to send so you have a higher converting marketing uh power and something that is not, you're not paying huge amounts of revenue to Meta or Facebook, you're not paying cost mm -hmm. per click, you're not paying cost per impression. Uh, they have a higher open rate and all of these things. Um, so uh, yeah, that's one of the main drivers. Second one is down to sort of experience. We say that, um, you know, a, a, and I don't mean experience from a user experience, perspective, sure. like, like a technical experience. Mm -hmm is a general fact around e-commerce life that faster websites convert better. Um, mobile apps on average are three times faster than mobile web, generally because you're caching images and that does leave you a little bit more freedom to use a higher quality image than you would expect on the mobile version of a website, mm -hmm. um, which all sort of does tie into a nicer user experience and browsing experience. Uh, the real estate is much smaller so you're not cluttered with direct, you know, you're not, you're not having to fight for people's attention. Um, and then also the thing that re really helps is uh, retention. Right. If you are making people feel like they're part of a club, an exclusive community, you use app exclusive content, app exclusive discounts. Now we've seen people and companies triple their retention rate within sort of 90 days of having an app. Right. Um, so all of those things sort of coalesce to get 
a customer that usually buys two or three things a year mm -hmm. in a company to buying six or seven things in a year. And all of that, uh, you know, the, the push notifications, the experience and the retention yeah. is what's doing that. Yeah, so so uh, you you can see already like the the transition of of behavior of people and how we're getting used to. It's funny because I was I was going through this the other day about how we're getting so used to portrait mode, right? Mm -hmm. We're used we're used to seeing things. It's now teaching us to see things. In fact, um, my son who does some acting, he just did, uh, up in LA, he just shot something recently that was instead of being a a series of six like half hour episodes, it's actually sixty one and a bit minute uh episodes shot in portrait yeah. mode for the tiktok generation so it, yeah. it really i think even you know it's 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 multi-generational people are learning because they're spending so much time on their phone they're they're being trained into accepting or liking portrait mode sure and that's uh you know reflected within within apps better than it is on the mobile mobile web Especially right with mobile web you have to cram so many elements in uh, and you then have the browser experience there too. So you have Chrome and Safari adding their own elements on top. Whereas mm -hmm. you know, within your screen real estate to maximize that, you can take over the whole thing with an app. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, yeah. So when you, when, so if you were getting, if you were advising a company who's getting in, it wants to build an app now for their product or whatever, what are some, of, what are some of the key elements? Because I mean, there are apps and there are apps, there are apps that are fantastic and there are apps that are garbage. So what, what, what do you think is key for the experience if you want to have, if you want it to be an e-commerce driver? Sure. Well, I mean, with the, like, I, I, um, with the, you know, expansion of self-service platforms like Shopify, um, Wix, uh, Squarespace, Add to Cart, all, all you know, and the WooCommerce experience. Um, you have stopped paying web development agencies to an extent, uh, you know, massive amounts of money yep. to, to build you something over time, um, and then having to pay them to continually do the upkeep. I mean, I, I do understand that there are lots of companies that still do that within the Shopify ecos uh, ecosphere, and mm -hmm. others do. Um, mobile apps are similar. Uh, our platform is a no-code solution, and there are many other no-code solutions out there. Uh, the gone are the real days where you have to go and get something massively bespoke generated for you. You don't need that. You don't need those upfront costs. Um, and one of the great things about mobile apps is they are, you see the returns from sort of, you know, moment one right. that it's launched. So if I was to advise any company, um, you know, regardless if you're not on Shopify or, or any of the other platforms, I'd say find a no code um, solution that is, able to send push notifications one make sure you can send abandoned cart push notifications mm -hmm. they are gold dust to any e-commerce business can recover up to 60% of your abandoned checkouts which you know for any e-commerce uh, person looking at your own analytics yep. that is just money that you're losing um so yeah that that is one thing the other thing is kind of comes down to design um yep. are are the uh, app builders out there, are they taking conversion rate optimization into account? Because uh, that is one thing, you know, that we, we come on, our apps tend to have, you know, a, a two to 3% higher conversion rate than the website. So are, um, are the app builders or the app providers really taking that into account? Less is more with mobile app design. So make mm -hmm. sure that you are having something that at least look and, looks and feels good. And then mm -hmm. the last thing I'd say is, um, you know, when you're taking this into account, mobile apps are not set and forget. You cannot just create something and send it out there and expect it to work really well. Push notifications are a performance marketing channel. Sure. It's, the, it's the same as your email campaigns. They have to require, they, they do require lots of thoughts, lots of inputs. You need to plan ahead and you need to be planning around your app content too. Yeah. Um, so you can't just turn it on and expect it to work. It needs mm -hmm. to have a, a, a large amount of... Uh, um, yeah, input to, to be successful. Right. So on, on that note about the uh, the retention piece, because you know, we're, we're obviously all of us very used to having, I mean, I look at my phone sometimes and I'm like, I don't even know where these apps came from. 
uh, you know, I haven't used them in years or whatever. So to your point is, how do you how do you help people drive that retention piece? Part of what you just said is you obviously have to be continuing to innovate and making sure and understanding and analyzing, you know, the behavior. But it, oh. it's it's with our attention spans being so terrible and and we're and we're switching all the time. How, how the retention has got to be one of the hardest pieces. Well, I mean, there's there's many there's many ways to do to keep people interested on on mobile apps. Like I say, you know, people feel part of the club; they're more likely to to come back onto your platform and look at the things. So mm -hmm. we have companies that like to use, um, you know, the the app is their position for end of line items. If they mm -hmm. have something that they want to discount heavily, then they'll use that on the app, and they'll say to people, you know, you can only get this via the app; you can't get it anywhere else. We have people that do app exclusives, so get this product only on the app or get it early on the app, which, you know, really, really helps with that retention. Um, and then, you know, it's, it's your push notification campaigns. Are you providing enough, uh, you know, value to your customer with that, with that communication? It's short, you know, it's not an email. You can't send yep. that much in, in there. So you've got to make sure that, that that short piece of text is punchy. Um, and that's what really keeps people coming back. And then what that's the returning sessions. And then the things that, you know, the return, the abandoned cart checkout notification mm -hmm. as because it has the highest open rate out of any abandoned checkout uh, communication is the something that, that brings them back into being customers. Right. Yeah. And then and then there's another challenge, as I would see it as I, you know, people, especially it was happening before the pandemic and the pandemic accelerated it where people were looking more and more for kind of human connection. Right. Okay. And. But but then again, we're relying more on apps and more on technology in this. So how do you within how do you within an app still retain some level of human connection? Well, it's one of the nice things about some of the apps is that you can have a you know the, that easy chatbot function or talk to a human within your app experience. Mm -hmm. So you're able then to communicate directly with the brands, you know, at a touch of a thumb button. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, most people don't really, from an e-commerce perspective, uh, the, the bigger brands push customer service away. You know, they're trying to yep. Yep. make the whole process. Uh, we find that with the, with the smaller brands, you know, people want to have that, that uh, conversation. They want to be there to answer messages. Um, and you can do that all within apps as, as a better way than you can on the website. Um, also, one thing that we, we find that most e-commerce, I mean, this, this is slightly away from apps, but we, we sure. We, uh, you know, very much encourage it. Um, one of the things that we see uh, mistakes that e-commerce companies make all the time um, is they're very modest in their own stories. Um, I, you know, they don't really like talking about themselves or their expertise, and they're reluctant to shout about those things. The e-commerce space and, by extension, app commerce space is cluttered, and uh, you know, it's 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 um, saturated massively. The likes of drop shipping and uh, you know the the ease yeah. that you can start a, a Shopify store. There is a plethora of poor stores that are giving bad experiences and selling, in all honesty, bad products from the likes of AliExpress and things. Yeah. Um, what that has meant is that people are uh, less trusting of mm -hmm. e-commerce stores, and what what they really want to see is the story. So. Right. We're advising people on setting up their app or, you know, even making tweaks to their e-commerce store. We're saying, tell your story, put your, put your face on your website, P take pictures of you doing your, you know, your, um, your uh, sourcing, take pictures right. of the, the factory, take pictures of the, uh, the, the, the craftsman drawing lines on, on the garment or measuring things, all of those things establish trust and credibility talk about how long you've been doing it but doing it because people mm -hmm. want they want yeah. that experience because it's it you know the easiest thing for you to do to dispel a, a fear of drop shipping is to show the craft process yeah uh, show the manufacturing process because that's something that's missing yeah, no, I, I think that I think that's a really important point, actually, because because uh, our antennas are up around, uh, you know, things that haven't delivered or things that, you know, pop up on our Instagram feed and we click on an ad and we think, oh, this sounds fantastic. And then it's garbage. And uh, or or to your point is then you go, hmm, where is this coming from? But yeah. and and the thing is, obviously, the beauty is it's so much easier to tell your story nowadays. I mean, once upon a time, if we want to do a video testimony, or once upon a time, it used to cost a fortune. You have to get, source a local 
well, over, video crew and all of that, and now you can and now you can do it with an iPhone. Yeah. So uh, just pick up about the the uh, about how easy it is today to be able to create content that resonates with people and makes people feel secure because as i said once upon a time i remember doing in the old days that you know, want to get a customer testimonial you have to source a, a video company local to where the customer is and the, i mean it was a nightmare and it was an expensive process but oh. now you you have all of these like simple tools like your phone where you can yeah. you can you can uh, create authentic content that reassures your your customers uh, it's one of my favorite clients that I love talking about of ours. Uh, it's a company called Rock Those Curves. Um, it's a lady who sells plus size fashion to the over 55s market. Um, and, uh, you know, I could toot our horn about how much money we've generated for her, which is 310,000 pounds over a uh, course of about 10 months. But, yeah. you know, what, what really strikes me from her perspective is, you know, she doesn't, uh, she does everything herself. Um, she takes pictures of her clothes with her wearing them in the mirror with her mobile um and you know the authenticity of that translates so much to her target audience that they are very happy to buy from her and she's not using you know models she's not using mm -hmm. amazing product photography she's not using um you know uh really professional shoots to do these things but she's still made you know over a quarter of a million of pounds just through doing this with by herself um, with nothing more than an iPhone camera, it's it's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, so as long as you you know take in mind some aspects of design and yeah. uh, you know you're probably invest in some decent lighting, you are able to do these things yourself with not a huge amount of money. But it's the auth authenticity and the um, you know the credibility that yeah. really accelerated her company. Yeah. Um, and it is super easy to generate, uh, sorry, to create that content just from your phone. Yeah. And and I think that becomes even more important, that authenticity. And as you said, I mean, there needs to be, you know, it needs to be a well-designed app. And the, but the authenticity, because now, obviously, we have the whole AI piece that's, uh, and, and people are, you know, people are all over the place on their attitude to AI, but there is obviously a lot of skepticism and people are like wondering, oh, what's real, what's fake, what all, you know, and I, I use fake kind of loosely because just because it's AI doesn't, fake doesn't mean bad sometimes, it just means it's it's not it's not a human. But so um, what, what do you see the impact of AI on, on this segment? Sure, absolutely. So, I mean, push notifications are a text-based uh, marketing platform. Um, mm -hmm. It's 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 all language, so you know it's very easy for you. I mean, we do actually encourage some of our uh, clients on our lower packages. You know, if you're having trouble with push notifications, go ask ChatGPT to write okay. you ten, and then select from those ten and then tweak them yourselves and then send them. It's a much faster mm -hmm. way if you are terrible at writing copy. Um, so there's the the inputs from from that from a text based perspective, and then you know what we're probably going to see in a few years is personalized recommendations um, throughout apps on, on you know, your, your content and products that will use some form of AI engine to help suggest the, the best product based on your purchases. Meta have been doing that for years. Mm -hmm. um, they have put so much money into their AI generated uh, targeting platform. Um, push notifications to me are the next bastion of that. Right. That's, that's interesting. And just the last thing you mentioned, uh, you mentioned at the beginning, like less is more. And I think that's, and, and I think that's something that people always struggle with. And obviously, if you, if you have an app, and you only have this amount of real estate, and, and all of that, that less is more, it, it becomes, it becomes critical. And that's often the hardest thing for people. Like if people are great at saying, oh, and you should add, this. oh, and we need this and, and have that in there. People are, are, it's really hard for people to strip away and go, okay, let's get down to what is essential. Yeah, yeah, it, it is, it is tough. Um, but, you know, by using a, uh, an app builder, mm -hmm. um, the boxes are chosen for you. So all you really need to do is fill the boxes. Right. Uh, and once you, I mean, the easiest thing to do is to get the mobile version of your website up and then, you know, start building it that way. Um, but it's, you know, things, things are populated pretty easily. Um, and, like I say, with you know the the good mobile app builders take conversion rate optimization into account when they're letting you design the app, so you won't actually have the ability to clutter it. Um, mm. Those things are locked away from you. Uh, in, a, in a sense, we do that. We we give you elements to design your homepage and your shop page, 
but your product pages are kept to a certain formula that we know converts. Um, and it's even very similar to what you'd expect from like a Shopify theme package right. or a, you know, a, a, um, a Wix stores theme package. Um, they don't really allow you to, or they, you can if you really try uh, to deviate from the theme because the theme is what converts. Yeah. And there are, there are extra bits that you can do on top of it. Um, yeah, this is absolutely. Uh, it's fascinating. This has been great, Campbell, and uh, all of Campbell's information will be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your business. Sure. So, um, yeah, I run a company called Store Lab. Uh, we are a 35 person team working out of London. Uh, we love apps. We design apps on a, on a daily basis for hundreds of customers. Uh, we love writing push notifications and uh, you know, providing success. We are a revenue focused company. We only really care about making sales. That's why I got into this. Uh, I used to be in social media and then found out about push notifications and their success. So uh, yeah, got in here. I have a, a book coming out called The App Commerce Revolution. It will be out in February. Uh, Excellent. It's all about how to um, build and launch a successful app in less than 30 days. Um, and yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn or come to our website and get more information. Fantastic. And maybe you'll come back in, uh, where did you say, January? Uh, it's fab. The, the book should be out. Yeah, but yeah. Well, when the, yeah. when the book releases, maybe you'll come back and we can talk about the book. Uh, fantastic. Oh. Well, listen, thanks again, Campbell. Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you all again soon.